we shall continue our study of uh, linked lists and binary search trees. The problem that we had in hand in the previous day was that we were given a set of integers with operations insert, delete, find or member, maybe get the minimum, get the maximum and uh, if we are representing a set, maybe we would like to do union, intersection and other operations. And we were trying to find out a data structure implementation of this. This will, this problem will come when you are representing a set of numbers, when you are representing uh, a list of numbers, when you are representing a role list and various other forms, you would uh, find some operations on, may not be integers, maybe instead of integers you have a set of names, but all of them can be compared, you know. There is a comparison operation between any two elements. Instead of these being integers, maybe you would have a set of strings, that is names, like you would store in a dictionary or you would store somewhere, where given two such elements you can compare and by that comparison you can say somebody is less than, equal to or greater than. So, these techniques will be applicable everywhere in all these uh, cases. And uh, we saw unordered lists, ordered lists and then we came on to something called binary search trees. And uh, we ended up here, we saw that if we order, suppose we have got some five elements and we order them, we can place them in an ordered linked list like this, where the insert operation would place it in the proper place the other operation would scan from the beginning to find it. Then we saw that instead of having just one pointer which points to the ordering function, we could possibly have two types of uh, links at a node and say those which are less than are on the left and those which are to the right are greater than the element concerned. And identical elements can be stored in the same set by just placing another counter here which indicates the number of times this element occurs, if it is not a set, that is if it is a list where duplicates will also be considered. And we saw that insertion, deletion, etcetera, the basic operation of member would inherently take less comparisons than a, a linear linked list. This is because a linear linked list would start from the beginning and would find it somewhere here. In the worst case, it would be length proportional to the length of the list. Here, it would be proportional to the height of the tree. This is called a binary search tree and the number of comparisons to find any element would be proportional to the height of the tree. Now, in the worst case, this, this tree as we saw in the previous day, the or depends on the order in which the elements come. And if the order in which the elements come are say this order then the tree would become 15, the next element would become 10, the next element would become 9, next element would become 6, the next element would become 3 and this would actually become in a <coughs> pathological situation, it would become just like a linked list structure with these pointers being null. So, for a bad situation, this uh, structure would be like this, but in other situations, you would expect the tree to be uh, of a better quality. You can prove that on an average, if the numbers come from a random distribution, then the worst case height would be, if n is the number of nodes, you could prove we will not do it in this class. The On an average, the worst case height would be log n. You can also modify the algorithms to make sure that the height in the worst case is also not more than log n. So, binary search trees provides a, a very interesting way of uh, solving these linked list, uh, these problems where the operations are insert, delete, member, etcetera, etcetera. So, before going into the technique of minimizing the worst case length, we will quickly go and see what the algorithms for insertion, deletion, find, minimum, etc. would look like in a binary search tree. Here in a linked list, we are very clear, reasonably clear about what these algorithms uh, would be. We will, today in today's class, we will quickly go through what the algorithms will be here. 
Any questions? Okay, let's first um, see what the node structure would be. In a binary search tree, the node diagram is like this. There is a data, there may be other records also, but there is a data, left pointer and a right pointer. And the structure will be like this, type def struct node type, data, node type, left and right. Isn't it? There will be a left pointer, then a right pointer. And a tree is a pointer to such a node. For example, from here, if a pointer to this node will give you this tree, a pointer to this node will give you this tree, a pointer to this node will give you this tree. By default, null is also a pointer to a tree. So, we define our tree type to be a pointer to such a node. I hope this is okay. Any questions? You need not take down notes, the standard, any book will tell you. Okay. <coughs> now, suppose our tree at any instant of time is like this. Okay. Now, let us see how useful this tree is for doing our operations and how we will perform our operations. So, we are provided a pointer to the start of the tree. That is, we are provided a variable of type tree start. The start of a tree is usually called the root of a tree. All right. So, we will be provided with a pointer of this type, a variable of this type, there is a pointer to a node and let us say this. And we want to find out, uh, we want to do several operations. Suppose we want to do an operation find, find with this variable root a value say 18. What will our algorithm be? Can anybody suggest? At any node, what will the algorithm be? If root pointer dot data we check whether this is the value, this is the value or not. If this is the value, then we return this pointer, because this is what we want to find. If the pointer is null, we return failure, that is it does not exist. All right. Now, there are two more cases left, that the pointer is not null and this is not the value. So, the value 18 or the value x, whichever you want, may be less than this or greater than this. If it is less than this, then you recursively call it on root pointer dot left. Otherwise, you recursively call it on root pointer dot right. Clear? Is the algorithm to find an element clear? We will, I will come to the code also. So, the algorithm to find an element and suppose it is not there, then what would you return? There are two options, you can return null, that is when you reach the leaf, you can return null. Okay. <coughs> Otherwise, you could return the place where it should be put in, where suppose this 18, instead of 18 you gave 19. Then you would look here, this is not null, 19 is greater than this, so you will come here. This is not null, 19 is less than this, you will come here. This is not null, 19 is greater than 18, so you would come here, which is null and you can return null. That is one option. The other option, you can return a pointer to this node. Why you could return a pointer to this node? We will come to later on. Okay. So, suppose we are going to return null. Yeah, somebody said insertion, is not it? If you were to insert 19, where would you insert it? Here, is not it? So, if you find the operation, if the element exists, you return a pointer to that element. If the element does not exist, you return a pointer 
to the parent where it is to be inserted, then you could also insert it at that point easily. So, let us have a look at the find operation. All right, tree find, find returns a pointer to this node, find returns a tree type, is not it? Is that understood? Please stop me if you do not understand, because I want this part to be absolutely uh, clear. This is the variable which is passed temp, this is the value which I want to find. So, let us assume it is here. If temp is equal to null, return temp. That is the first thing. Else, if temp pointer data is equal to value, then return temp. This part is also clear? Temp pointer data. Oh, instead of this, you could use star temp date dot data is the same thing. Instead of the C, temp pointer data means the content of temp. What temp points to, which is the content of temp. You could also use the content operation and do it. This is the same thing. Else, if temp pointer dot data is greater than val, then what would you do? Return, find, of temp pointer dot temp pointer dot data is greater than val. That means, suppose it was 5, then this is greater than val. So, you would search on the left. So, the function at this point would be return find temp pointer left comma right and if it is null you would have returned null this is what you would do on the other hand if we are interested in if it is null that is if it does not exist we are interested in returning the parent then we have to do something else that is we have to check here if the left pointer is null see suppose we are to return 19. Then here we would find, suppose it is 17, okay. Then so 15 we would come here, then we would come here at 18, we have found this condition to be true. Temp pointer dot data is greater than val. So if we, if we are interested in just returning null if it does not exist, then we would simply call it on temp pointer dot left. And then you would come back here is null, we would return null. But if we are interested in returning this element because it is null, why? Because we would insert it here. Then we will have to make a check that if temp pointer dot left is equal to null, then you would return temp. Otherwise, you would continue. So, that is what the case is here. If temp pointer is equal to null, return temp. Otherwise, that is temp pointer dot left is not null, then you just find it on the left. Is that understood? Any questions? The, the last case, the last case means temp pointer dot data is less than val, equal to has been checked, greater than has been checked. So, if temp pointer dot next is greater than val, then here you would simply return right and if it is null and you would like to return that node then you would have to make that check if temp pointer dot right is equal to null return temp else return find of temp right well so this find routine as it is written here would basically give you if the element exists it would give you the pointer to that element. If it does not exist, that means there will be a null 
exists, it will give you the parent. That is what this routine does. And if the start is null, it would return null. So, is this function understood? The find function it is the most crucial function in a routine uh, like this. Now, if the find has been understood, then insert is not difficult now. For insert, can anybody tell me what is the first thing that you would do? Find and get the pointer back. So, now you have got a pointer back which says four things, uh, uh, basically three things. One is, if the root is null, it will give you null. If whatever it points to, you have to check the value. If that is the value, then you have got the element. If that is not the value, then you have to basic, depending on the value which you have to insert, you have to insert either to the left or to the right. So, suppose you are to insert 17, then you would first call find 17 and get say place is equal to find of r 17 and you would get this pointer. And here you will check if place dot data is equal to value, then either then you will do nothing because it is a set or if you are representing all duplicate elements, then in the node structure you would have a counter, you just increment that counter. If this is not the case, then place dot data can be less than val. If place dot data is less than val, then this pointer that is place dot data is less than val. So, it has now has to be inserted this side. Now, since your find returned this pointer, this must have been null. Suppose there was an element here 16, then 17 would have to be inserted here. Since it returned this and 17 does not exist, then this must be null. Right? If this is null, then you just malloc an element here and insert it here. The other case that if place dot data is greater than null, the same thing you do this side. All right. So, what is the insert routine? Let us have a look at the insert routine now. The insert routine will take an argument which is a pointer and a value. And suppose you are to insert, let us take another example. So, it will help us to solve the problem better. Let us take another example. With the same set of data, we will take another example. Suppose this is the tree. And let us say we give insert 12. This is R, R 12. Then the first thing that we will do is so find R 12. <coughs> so, what will which point to find R 12 will start from here? this is not equal to not null. So, it will come this side, it is less, then it will come this side. Since this is null, it will return this pointer. So, when I write place is equal to find R 12, this will be place. Now, what am I left to check? First, I will check if place is null, that is all right. That means, that root itself was null and I will have to insert a new element. If place is null, then I will have to insert a new element. So, there can be several cases. One is place is null. Here I will have to create the tree itself. That means, it does not exist. Second is 
place dot data is equal to val. That means, this is the element I would have tried to insert 11. If I tried to insert 11, I would have returned with this as place and this is one case. The third case would be place dot data is less than val and the fourth case is place pointer data is greater than val. In this case, we are here. Now, how will we solve this case? That is, this case would have arisen if R itself was like this. Then you would malloc a node tree malloc this start dot data is equal to val, start left is null and start right is null, is not it? and return, there is nothing to return because this, this just makes the start node. It has inserted it in the, this start is actually a global variable which indicates the start of the tree or the root of the tree. So, if place was null, the root, the tree contained nothing, so we just created the tree. Else, we come to the next case. Let us assume place dot data equal to val means we do nothing. Okay. So, this check we do not make because if this check is there we just do nothing. Place dot data is say greater than val. Suppose this is the next case that is else place pointer dot data is greater than val that is whatever is the data is greater than the value that would have occurred here if you place 12 then place pointer dot data is less than val. But if you would like to insert say 13 then place would still be here but place pointer dot data would be greater than val. Then where will you insert it? Here is not it? You would insert it here then what is the first step that you would do? You would malloc something here, you would malloc something and assign it to this, you would malloc a node and assign it to this. So, that is the first step. Why left place pointer dot data is greater than val. So, if val is so sorry that is if val was 10, then this would be the case, not 13, I am sorry. This would be the case when val is say 10. If I want to insert a value 10, then place pointer dot data is 11 and val is 10, so this condition holds. So, then I will insert in the left. So, I would malloc a node and assign it to the left. I would put place left dot data equal to val, place left dot left is null, place left dot right is null. And else if place dot data is less than val, I would repeat the same thing, just all of this would be right. I would insert it on the right, just place dot right would be same, place dot right dot data would be val, place dot right dot left would be null and place dot right dot right would be is not dot it is pointer place pointer right pointer right would be null. Okay. So, this is how insertion goes and if it is equal I just did not do anything I came out because we are trying to represent a set where duplicate elements are not kept. So, in all these cases of a tree,
the number of comparisons that I made for finding any element was proportional to the length of the path from that element to the root. Suppose 11, the number of comp comparisons was proportional to this length from that this element to the root. If it was say suppose there was an element here, what can you give me a value of an element which should exist here? Can a value of 1 be here? 16 can be here. All right, 16 can exist here. Suppose I want to find 16, then the number of comparisons I have to make is this. For insertion, the number of comparisons is the same as the find, plus one malloc, plus one more in comparison and a malloc. So they take the same. All of them are proportional to the length of the path from the node where the operation is done to the root. Now what else? We were having operations, delete will come to, say suppose we want to find out the minimum element. Then where, uh, where do we find out the minimum element? You go on left, 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 left till you reach null, alright. So you go here left, 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 you have reached null here, then this must be the minimum element. The one, you go on moving left till you reach some element whose left pointer is null. That means that element is the smallest element. And that is true anywhere. The smallest element below this is here. The smallest element below this is here. The smallest element below this is itself. And to find out the smallest or the largest element, even then it is proportional to the height of the tree from the smallest element to the root. So the function for finding the minimum or finding the maximum are very similar and it is very simple actually. It is like this, find min, you give the pointer. If temp is equal to null, return minus 1, that is it cannot be found. It, uh, that is the, the, there is uh, no element at, at all, so there is no question of a minimum. Else if temp pointer left is equal to null, return temp data. If temp pointer left is equal to null, return temp data. Otherwise, you recursively call it on left. Which will work like this. Here, this is not null. Temp pointer left is not null. So you call it here. This is not null, temp pointer left is not null, you call it here. This is not null, temp pointer left is null, so temp pointer dot data is printed or returned. So this way you can print out the minimum, maximum you just go all rights. Now can anybody tell me how I will do a delete operation? That is suppose I give you delete temp 11. You find 11. If find returns you something such that the data is not there, then there is nothing to be done. So find operation is very crucial. So to do any delete operation, first do a find operation. And then this will return p you check p pointer data. If p pointer data is not equal to x, forget it. Now if p pointer dot data is equal to x, what would you do? Let us take a simple case. You know, you, to solve these problems, you have to solve it taking simple cases first. Suppose there is no element, then find operation would have returned null, so there is no question of deleting. Suppose p pointer data is not equal to val, not equal to x here, then also there is nothing to done. But suppose p pointer dot data is equal to x. Now let us take some cases. This may be an element like 11, which has got both the pointers null. Then what would you do? Hmm? To delete this element, 
you have to this pointer has to be null. So, you have to somehow manage and get here. You have to manage to get here. You do not have a back pointer to go here. So, you have to write a modified find routine to find the parent of the node. So, instead of find, you have to write a find parent. Right? Instead of a find, you a simple find will not lead you to the so, you have to find the parent actually. So, instead of doing a find, you do a find parent. So, to delete a node which has both its children null, you have to find the parent and just nullify this and free this node. So, this case is simple. Now, suppose I am to delete 28, none of them are null. Can anybody tell me what I have to do? I will put this element here. If I put this element here and then and delete this element, no, what? So, you make 15 point to 36 first uh, for the right. Make 15 point to 36 and make 36 point here. what is the property of this element? Let, let us look at, let us take a cleaner example, we will get the, it is not difficult, you have to just get the property of that element. To make the case a little more complex, and let us say we are to delete 28. What is the property of 28? With respect to these, these elements are greater than 28 and all these elements are less than 28. So, if I delete this, here I have to place an element somehow that I do not have to reconstruct the whole tree and I do not have to reorganize and I can do it like this, I can delete the whole thing and then insert all these elements one after another from the root. I could have deleted this and inserted 16, then 18, then 19, then 30, 36, you know so many inserts would have come in. Now, among this set, could I insert any element from this set here? If I inserted 19 here, it would work, right? From this set, can I insert element here? 30. So, now can you tell me the general property? On the left side, you can replace the maximum element or on the right side, you can replace it by the minimum element. And the maximum or the minimum element will again have to be deleted. Okay. So, if you are to delete this element, you find it, then if we have checked one case where both pointers are null, the other case may be when one pointer is null and the third case which is here is none of the pointers are null. When one of the pointer is null, suppose this side is null or this side is null or these three cases can be tackled in the same way. What you would do is, let us take one choice, if the left pointer exists, then find the minimum, uh, find the maximum this side. If the left pointer does not exist, then go to the right side. If the left pointer exists, find the maximum here. So, find the maximum, you would have come here. Replace this value here and delete this element. Recursively, it will, you would go down. 
is not it. Now, to delete this element, I have reached this case, which I can delete easily. Is this understood? So, if the left pointer exists, find the maximum on the left side. Replace the value there and delete this element. You have still only moved along one path. Please note, to find the maximum on the left side, again you just moved here. So, you will never move more than the length of the longest path in the tree. You are not seeing all the elements at all. Now, this does not mean in two steps you will be able to solve the problem. I will just take a simple case where you would require more steps. Suppose you have to delete 15, then I would find the left pointer here, sorry, uh, let there be an element, let this be 10, let there be an element 9 here. Suppose this is the tree, to delete 15, I would find the maximum on the left, which is 10 this would be 10. To delete 10, what would I do? I would find the maximum on the left, which is 9. And then to delete 9, since it reaches the leaf, I will delete 9. And I will get a structure, which is 10, 8, 9, 19, 16, 25. So, using your find and delete and by an exchange and find max and find min, you can easily uh, get the delete routine. I will leave it to you to write it down because it may not be written down in a page, but you can just sit down and work out how to write out the delete routine. But just take a note, it is also proportional, the co number of comparisons and computations will be proportional to the length of the longest path or the elements which are deleted. Only one path you will go across. You will not see more than one path in the knot. Next, Suppose you are to print these elements in a sorted fashion. Can you tell me what you would do to print these elements in a sorted fashion? You are given this tree pointer here. You would you would go like this. You have, you would have to print it 4, 8, 11, 15. 18, 19, 20. So, if you understand recursion properly, you would do it this way. If this is null, you return. If pointer, if r is null, you return. Otherwise, you recursively call it on r pointer dot left, print r pointer dot data and then again call it recursively and r pointer dot right. I would leave it to you to just work it out and we will see it in the next class. We will see two things, one is how to balance the tree, so that the worst case height is always log and we will see other functions on these search trees. Search trees are very important in data structures and they will come to place in many examples. So, once we are clear about search trees, we will go back to all our examples and see where and how they will be useful.